In half lore in 10 minutes, ready, go. A guy named William moves from England to a small town called Hurricane with his wife and three kids. It's in this small town that he meets a fella named Henry, who has his own kids, and Henry and William become good friends. They decide on a business venture to open up a family diner that sold cake and Pizza. with the main attraction being these two animatronic suits that can either be an animatronic or can spring lock into suits that humans can wear. Keep that in mind, it'll, it'll be important later. Henry wore the Freddy suit and William wears the Bonnie suit. Fellas, business is booming for Fazbear's Family Diner, so much so that they open up another branch called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, where he creates four new animatronics, Bonnie, Chica, Freddy, and Foxy. But what we don't know about William Afton is that he's a crazed lunatic, an absolute psychopath. It is for this reason that it's assumed that Henry created an animatronic called the Puppet to protect his daughter Charlie from danger. One day in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, Henry's daughter Charlie gets locked outside of the pizzeria. However, the puppet can't save Charlie as it's stuck in a box, and as William pulls into the driveway, he ends up murdering Charlie and dragging her into an alley. Once the puppet finally gets out of the box, it goes outside to protect Charlie, only to find her dead. What happens next is that Charlie's spirit inhabits the puppet, so it's now possessed by Charlie's spirit, and Henry lost his only child. Now, while all of this is going on, let's focus on William Afton's family. He has two sons and a daughter, but right now, let's focus on the boys. The small one is Evan, and the older is Mike. Evan is scared of the animatronics, and Mike sees this as a wonderful opportunity to prank Evan. On Evan's birthday party, Mike, the older brother, decides to put Evan near the mouth of an animatronic version of Freddy to give him a big kiss. What happened instead is that the spring locks on the suit fail due to the moisture of the tears, which ends up causing the animatronic to bite down on William's kid like a Big Mac, killing him, thus marking the bite of 83. The death of his youngest son was enough to spiral William Afton's mind into even more chaos and psychotic behavior. He ends up luring five children into the safe room of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza dressed up as Spring Bonnie, from which he then kills them. But where would he hide the body, you may ask? Well, when Afton was designing the four new suits, he made a compartment specifically designed to fit children inside of the animatronics. And because of this, no one was able to find any evidence. The puppet, witnessing all of this, decides to assist the children. But there's five children and four suits. Where would the extra child go? Well, the extra child was stuffed into the Golden Fredbear costume. So now we have six kids that have their souls stuck in animatronics. Shortly after, Afton ends up getting fired from his own company and the restaurant is closed down due to health violations. However, William Afton didn't stop there. After the closure of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, he decides to make a new company called Afton Robotics and creates a new location specifically designed to murder children. But why, you may ask? Well, when Afton was murdering the five children, he discovered a way to become immortal, introducing Remnant. When the kids die, they release this material called Remnant, which bonds your soul onto something. This is basically how the missing children and Charlie were able to possess the spirits of animatronics. He uses this information specifically to create Circus Baby, who was able to lure children in with games and then crush them inside of her stomach. So now we know that William's youngest child is dead, and his eldest is doing something not really important right now, but maybe later. Anyway, Elizabeth, Afton's daughter, is here at this private party to unveil the new location in the franchise, until Elizabeth gets a little too close to Baby, and yeah, she gets folded like a lawn chair. Anyway, because of this incident, the Circus Baby pizza world was shut down due to a gas leak. But rest assured, he still kept the animatronics open for rental. For what reason? Well, you remember this guy, right? Afton's only son? William being the wonderful father he is, he sent his son to locate and free the soul of Elizabeth, who is trapped inside of Circus Baby. So now let's shift to the new star of the show, Michael Afton, who survives the first four nights pretty well until around the fourth night, where technicians are instructed to scoop out the shells of the animatronics and take the scalvageable endoskeletons. This scooping machine also has some remnant, I wonder why. Soon enough, all of the animatronics get scooped, but they all combine their parts of their endoskeleton into some weird megazord known as Ennard. On the final night, our man Michael ends up finding himself in this godforsaken scooping machine, and it turns out Baby's true intentions were to scoop the living hell out of Michael's organs and make some room for Ennard to chill in there, like some fucked up hermit crap. Needless to say, our boy Michael gets scooped like he's one of those strawberry sherbet ice creams, and all that remnant and keeps his soul alive, whilst Ennard makes his way inside of the corpse to escape the complex. Wait, wrong game. 
Eventually, we realize that Michael's body slowly ends up deteriorating due to him being basically a, a walking corpse. A few days later, Ennard ends up escaping into a sewer system, and just when you think our boy is dead, he gets reanimated back to life. Now that Michael has freed Elizabeth, his new goal is to find William Afton. Fast forward a bit, Michael isn't able to find his father, but while all of this is happening, William decides to go to the original abandoned location to dismantle all of the old animatronics. William ends up snapping those fools like Lego bricks, but unbeknownst to William, he just awoken the spirits in a physical form. The spirits all gather up and confront William. However, in this safe room lies the very suit that William Afton used to kill these children. In an attempt to, I don't know, uh, scare them, he puts on the suit and laughs mockingly. It was all fine and dandy until those spring locks on the suit got a little too loose, and yeah, William ended up getting crushed and mutilated, causing a very ironic death. His corpse just laid there for a while, until some fools decided to reopen the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise as a horror attraction. They found the suit and thought, hey, this bloody animatronic suit seems to be perfect to put inside of a horror attraction for kids. When they do this, William decides to become alive again and stalks this area for a week. I say a week because after one week passed, the building was set on fire. The reason being unknown, but all that you need to know is that Springtrap, or William, is still alive despite the fire. It's possible it could have been Michael to set the fire nice. in an attempt to try and kill William Afton, but we don't know. However, he didn't escape without significant damage, as now he has to repair himself a little bit, and do you remember Ennard who escaped through the sewer? Well, Baby was ejected from this and ends up having to piece herself together into Scrap Baby, while the rest of Ennard dons a Freddy mask to become Molten Freddy. We've discussed a lot of characters this video, but there's one that I haven't talked about in too much detail. That would be Henry, William Afton's friend, whose daughter became the puppet. In all of this grief, Henry steps in to finally devise a plan to end it all. He opens up a new pizzeria under the Freddy's franchise to gain the attention of the roaming animatronics, including Michael Afton, who still wants to find William Afton. Mike ends up getting the security job, and remember, he still looks like his father here. Henry creates an animatronic to capture his daughter. The animatronic is called Lefty, and little by little, Mike collects every single one of the animatronics into one facility, all according to Henry's plan. And on the final night, we finally get to hear Henry. He has this awesome speech that my words couldn't do justice, so by all means, check it out on your own. However, Henry's plan was to gather all the animatronics to one place in order to burn them, freeing their souls. He tells Mike, the volunteer, that there was a way for him to get out, but he feels that Mike might want to die here. Henry commits arson to the building, killing all of the animatronics ever, including Mike, himself, and of course, William Afton, where his soul is presumably forever tortured by all of the animatronics. We finally get a peaceful ending, all loose ends finally tied together. How peaceful. Until the next game comes though, this is where another company takes control of the FNAF games instead of Scott Cawthon, so there might be a lot of plot holes, but it's up to you on which story you want to continue or end with. Anyways, it's said that before William died, he uploaded himself virtually onto binary code, and when they develop a virtual FNAF experience, William's conscious enters through code and now is in the virtual game. He's able to use his power to slowly take over people's bodies. William ends up finding a host named Vanessa to take control of, using her to create an alter ego called Vanny, which William can take control of. Shortly after, a new FNAF mall is created. God, these guys really need to stop making FNAF branded things. And go figure, in this mall, nine children are missing. Our main cast is the Glamrock series of Chica, Freddy, Roxy, and this alligator who apparently jumped the living hell out of Bonnie and killed him. All you need to know is that these animatronics are in some way controlled by William Afton. Anyway, Glamrock Freddy ends up malfunctioning on stage because he is exempt from being controlled by William and he spasses out. He wakes up near closing time only to spot Gregory, some homeless kid who presumably thinks that living in a mall with robot animals is a good idea. Now, some people assume that Gregory is an animatronic because how his vision glitches when he sees Vanny. Freddy and Gregory work together and basically end up stealing parts of animatronics to make Freddy stronger. To do this, they throw Chica into a trash compactor, snapping the alligator Monty into bite-sized pieces, and then promptly commit vehicular man slaughter on a fox. They end up exploring underneath the complex to find a replica restaurant where they find the Blob, a creature that has the souls of what seems like many animatronics and William Afton? I, I thought you were dead. Anyway, William wants to resume his favorite hobby, killing children, so that's the reason why he wants to control all of the animatronics, is just to murder children. But after an epic final fight, Gregory and Glamrock Freddy end up burning the entire complex whole, which probably won't work on William Afton. And right as William Afton is about to catch Gregory and Glamrock Freddy, William Afton is captured by the blob to, I don't know, some other place now. As you know it, the complex ends up getting shut down, and that's the ending. We get a beautiful ending, similar to the one of Pizzeria Simulator, overlooking a hill with a lot of corpses, and this time, I can say for sure, 
all loose ends are finally tied together. Until the books and DLC release,